schadenfreude. Everybody must have screamed, ah, he's a sung hero. A little pushy pushy. Are you back from listening to Stairway to Heaven twice? Now those are just words I looked up on the internet. Unreasonable Doubt, a podcast about West Virginia University basketball, starts now. Hello, from the studio in Nitro, West Virginia. This is Unreasonable Doubt. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt. This is a basketball podcast, and we're going to get to the basketball. But I'm recording this right after the West Virginia University, University of Houston football game. And uh, Dana Holgerson was coaching for the other team, and he used to coach for West Virginia. And being on the other side of the Dana Holgerson experience, it, uh, you know, it takes you back to 2012 when Baylor (laughs) leaves Morgantown losing 70 to 63, Texas losing in their own house 42 41 in this almost exact same scenario. Holgerson with the win with Will Greer hitting Jennings and getting the two-point play. And Will Greer had the 15-yard penalty, but Texas couldn't make West Virginia pay. And then Dana's on the other side of it, and they go Hail Mary and win. What a crazy game. I don't like being on the other side of that. <laughs> I don't... It's... It's a roller coaster of emotions. And if you're really invested in football and just watching the internet where West Virginia is down 11 with seven minutes left and it's like, oh, same old WVU. Why did I have any faith in this game? I had a bad feeling about this. And then somehow West Virginia, that guy on the two-point conversion Bounces around five times. It doesn't hit the ground. He catches it. West Virginia down three. Gets a stop. Crazy. The guy who is on the practice squad catches that touchdown for the seemingly game winner. And two (laughs) 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike. uh, Assessed on the kickoff. And then a play to get him to midfield. And then Hail Mary, you blew it. And it's, there's only 12 games. That's when a game like that happens in basketball, and it happens more in basketball than it does in football, I would assume. There's, there's 30 other games. It does help a little bit. It it helps ease the sting. This one, you got to stew in it. You don't play for, you know, almost a week and a half, and you just got to stew in this. And you get to come back home with that all over you. <laughs> oh my gosh. And poor Neil Brown. I don't know. I don't, I've never played football. Don't know. You think I don't know anything about basketball. I really don't know anything about, about football. What I do know is that Houston wins. Neil Brown is like pleading with the refs after the game. Uh, like so, I don't know the words that are coming out of his mouth. It just looks terrible. Like you just shake hands and try to get out of there as soon as possible and not plead your case for what? What are you what, that's the that's it, dude. That's it. It's it's really bad. It reminded me it reminded me of the TV show Succession. Neil Brown at the end there. Uh and I don't want to spoil succession. I'll just leave it there. Wow. <laughs> Football fans. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, I almost I almost woke up my whole house when Clement caught that touchdown pass. And uh and then and then you saw the rest of it. All right, basketball coming up. You want to catch some wholesome content about WVU sports? Do you want to get great reads and listens on reactions outside of mine to the latest WVU football game? Go to smokingmusket.com 
listen to West Bipod with Joel and Jordan. Consume all, if you're, you know, at any time, wins or losses, you should check this stuff out. It's going to be a great week. <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to be the worst week. But if you want to commiserate, smokingmusket.com, West Bipod, check it out. So basketball, we're getting closer. Now we're getting into uh, tomorrow. The Big 12 preseason poll is going to come out. I'd predict West Virginia to be in the bottom half based on what I'm seeing as far as uh, one computer, not the computer I care about the most, the Ken Pomeroy computer. One computer has West Virginia in the 50s in Division One. EvanMaya.com, Evan Mayakawa. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name. He's got West Virginia in the 60s, barely in the top 100 from a defensive ranking standpoint. I don't know how the computers work and how it accounts for changing coach. I mean, that's where for me, as much as I enjoy computer stuff and analytics in relation to basketball, like I pay attention to that a bunch. And yet, I've never been in the situation where I'm looking at the computer numbers and saying, hey, computer, what do you really know? When, yeah, you know where these guys played in the past, and you can put that into your computer. But Josh Eilers never coached a basketball game. So you have no idea. And maybe the people who who have the computers would say, yeah, that's a limitation. Or maybe they can explain, like, here's how we really crunch the numbers when there's a head coaching change. Anyway, don't expect West Virginia to be in the top half of a 14-team Big 12. And the battle waiver's still up in the air, so I don't know how that affects the preseason poll. But let's be clear about the expectations for this season. The computers are coming out, and it's fairly low. Like both, I think, have West Virginia as 10th or 11th out of 14 teams in the conference. ESPN has low expectations for WVU. Talked with talked about the schedule coming out a couple of weeks ago. ESPN and ESPN Plus, how many games West Virginia is going to be on the streaming service? Only three of the four new Big 12 schools will have more conference games on ESPN Plus and WVU. West Virginia plays 18 Big 12 games. 11 of them are going to be streaming. TCU, you know those, you know TCU, that school that cares about basketball a ton, they only have 5 games on ESPN Plus conference games. So 13 of their games are going to be on cable. And There's a chance for WVU that men's basketball may not show up on ESPN proper at all. Only the game at Iowa State has a chance of being on on the main ESPN. And we haven't been there in a long time. I mean, the streaming thing is ramping up. It doesn't feel good to be (laughs) near the bottom of the list of Say what you want about streaming is the future. ESPN doesn't put Kansas 11 games on ESPN+. Plus. Why? Because Kansas is Kansas. And also, TCU is the better example. They think TCU is going to have a good season. And maybe they will. <laughs> but the spreadsheet, now some of this may be because there's a spreadsheet in Bristol, Connecticut. That says West Virginia confirming with the computers so far that West Virginia is going to be a bottom half Big 12 team. And so you give the network spots to the better teams, the better projected teams. Maybe outside of a spreadsheet in Bristol, Connecticut, or maybe within that, they've included in the spreadsheet the absence of Bob Huggins on the sidelines. Like it's that's gotta be a factor. Like Bob Huggins. Nationally, you get some eyeballs that you wouldn't get on another game that you're passing through. If you see him on a stool 
and then getting up angrily and riding the refs. That's a show in of itself that you would want to watch. And that's not there now. I don't anticipate, I, you know, we haven't thought about this in these terms, and I guess it's not a big deal. Josh either is not going to be on a stool. There's no stool. So we're going to learn together what Josh Eiler's demeanor is as a head coach. What I hope is that he doesn't remind me of the Iowa State coach with the too tight polo and just stone face clenching his jaw with his arms crossed. I don't know if he's going to sit down a bunch. I, I don't know. We're all going to learn together. No stool. And so that's, I don't know how that has an effect on wins and losses. It's just something I'm going to miss. Still processing Bob Huggins <laughs> four months later, still processing him not being the coach at WVU. And we're, and we're going to be processing it together. But that has a factor of that many games being on ESPN+. And West Virginia is going to pay the Bob Huggins exposure tax this season. Like, Regardless, because remember, last season on the court, a bunch of turnover, not a lot of points and minutes returning from the previous season, but you had a Hall of Fame coach, a recently inducted Hall of Fame coach on the sidelines. And so that got you way less than 11 games on ESPN Plus in the conference schedule. And so for one season, nationally, WVU goes back to the 20th century. For, strictly from a national exposure perspective, with this many games, a majority, by a long shot, a majority of their games streamed on ESPN+. Plus. There wasn't streaming back in, <laughs> in 1999. Uh, but you've got to go back to the Catlett days. This reminds me, for one season, West Virginia basketball nationally being, I, there's going to be some intrigue of like the season after Huggins, but without him there, then you go back to, <laughs> then you go back to West Virginia, bottom half of a, of a stacked Big East conference vibe, right? And let's be, let me be clear. The, it's for this season only because this doesn't dictate how well the season's going to go. Number one, I'm just talking about exposure, not telling you how I feel about WVU's prospects for the season, how many wins, how many losses. Just from the eyeballs perspective, it's <laughs> this year feels different. And I think West Virginia next season will be on the network more regardless of what happens this season, because it's either going to go well this year, Eilert keeps his job, and if he's doing well, that means West Virginia is a top half of the, of the Big 12 team, and thus you're getting more games on network. Or it doesn't go well, and the spreadsheet, instead of saying West Virginia is a top half Big 12 team, then you get a new coach that comes in, and there can be, depending on who you hire, there could be a buzz associated with that. And then the spreadsheet says, hey, there's interest in the new guy. Let's put more games on the network. So we're getting the preseason poll soon. We're getting the annual secret scrimmage. Mike uh, Kazaza didn't report this, but he hinted on earsports.com that West Virginia would be playing Vanderbilt in the secret scrimmage site, I'm not sure wasn't given either. wasn't given up that information in the press in the latest press conference, but secret scrimmage, and we shouldn't know anything about it because it is a secret. But I think this season has a spirit of the secret scrimmage. Like this whole season could be a secret season. It could like if you're listening to this. You're part of a, a an exclusive club, right? You should feel important, not because you're listening to this podcast, but you're in an exclusive club of supporting WVU basketball. It definitely has dwindled. <laughs> I, 
you got I can hear the opposite side of that, but I feel like interest because of Bob Huggins' departure will drop regardless of how well they do. That that is a current thing. And because of how many games on ESPN Plus, that's the deal for this season. But Mountaineer Madness, I did not attend. Didn't seem like a ton of people attended. Fall break, students weren't there. You can have factors on why that wasn't uh, heavily attended. Big drop-off in cable games, as I mentioned. No Bob Huggins. Your best player this season could be a center from Amsterdam or a transfer from Montana State. Again, no disrespect to Jesse Edwards or Raekwon Battle, but that's your main guy. That's not... Ask Denver how much <laughs> how much people pay attention to Denver in the regular season with a with a foreign center. It's just I, it's just what it is. Uh, that's where my mind goes to as far as exposure, national recognition, and so I'm leaning into this as a as a good thing. Think of it as our secret club. Hey, hey, you're part of you're part of the secret club. We've got a secret handshake. We've got our motto. Uh, we'll have our potluck in a few weeks. We're all up in a treehouse. The sign at the door of the treehouse and really bad scribble says, stay out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It actually feels cooler. I mean, yeah, Bob Huggins, Hall of Fame coach. National recognition from that. Bob Huggins. Just a a well known personality and one of very few college coaches that are in the basketball hall of fame. Yeah, that's all awesome. And it gets you more recognition nationally. But that's, you know, anybody can do that. Like then it's like, you know, McDonald's is a national chain. Does that mean that they're the best? You know? <laughs> this feels more exclusive. Like, and and if it goes really well. I don't even I don't think ESPN is going to take those ESPN Plus games and put them on networks. I think they decide this stuff with basketball early on and they don't something drastic has to happen for this to change this season. So, welcome to the VIP experience. Let me see let me see your wristband. You got it? Cool. You're in the club. For this season only. It's it's a secret club season. And we have the velvet rope of ESPN Plus you have to get past, right? Ah, ah, ah. You want to you wanna be in the club? You got to drop your 10 bucks a month for ESPN Plus or the bundle. I know you can bundle. Any Listen, any Joe or Mary can, can watch Kansas this season. You can get your share of Texas anywhere. So you could be walking down the street and or you could be at the target and you could catch you could catch a Houston game. Anybody can do that. I mean, you'd you'd have to try to avoid a Baylor game on a TV that you walk past this year. That's for that's for everybody. A little more niche, the WVU experience. Right? Again, let's work on our secret handshakes. Let's come up with a secret language. It's like a speakeasy kind of vibe where like, we are in an, an exclusive club this season. And I, this is not, again, the, the season's going to play out the way it plays out. And this team has talent, and I'm, I'm not, it's, it's not a secret club because they're going to be bad. That's, what, that's not what I'm saying. They have the prospects of being good this year. It's just going to be good. <laughs> it's just going to be good or bad in front of less eyeballs nationally. And I'm, I'm for it. Now, as a 13-year-old, as a young person, not as into that. Kind of wanted, you know, you're young. You, 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 you don't want to watch mediocre basketball you gravitate towards blue blood schools that was my experience i'll never live that down i came back with beeline and have never left not gonna leave for the rest of my life totally in but that was just you know young and dumb this 
feels like, hey, you got <laughs> <laughs> this ain't for everybody this season. It's being dictated by ESPN. And and I'm not saying their spreadsheet is wrong, but the spreadsheet says we're in a secret club. Now, UCF is the most secret of basketball clubs. So shout out to that, like 16 of their 18 conference games. 16 are going to be streamed. And also, spoiler alert, they're going to be picked dead last in, in every computer, human poll. It's what it is. But they haven't had, like they've had Taco Fall. That's, that's, and that's the UCF basketball experience. WVU has put 20 years together here of success, of sustained success, where people are interested in what's going on. And the interest could be there, but you start, but you start and finish this season with some exclusive vibes. Welcome to the club. You're in. Believe me, there's there's levels of this too. One level is you got to stream it to watch it. Another level is you're listening to this podcast. If you're hearing the word, then you this is a very if I if I took this mindset to this podcast, then it's this is the most amazing experience. I'd feel so much better about it. Uh, and my self-esteem of like, this podcast is super exclusive. <laughs> this is a total VIP experience. Anybody can listen to anybody can listen to Dan Patrick or Dan Lebatard or these guys. Like anybody can catch that. You really got to dig to find this podcast. It's a VIP exclusive experience. And so will WVU basketball. It's going to be really, we're keeping it, we're keeping it tight. We're keeping the circle tight. And I'm, and again, I'm, I am treating that as a positive. And if it's not exclusive in the future, I'm also going to treat that as a positive because it's going to feel like it's, you're getting more respect. <laughs> it's a win win for me. That's it for this episode of Unreasonable Doubt. Did you watch that football game? What a crazy, kick in the head game that was <laughs> Gosh. that's it for this episode of unreasonable doubt listen on all the platforms or just pick one apple podcast spotify podcast amazon podcast overcast podcast pocket cast podcast youtube until next time i'm josh witt josh eiler as the head coach of the vip exclusive wvu basketball team for the 2023-2024 season he has zero wins and he has zero losses.